Hi everybody, good morning, this is Jean here um, from True Love Quilts for You. Uh, just a few minutes, to, I'm going to be uh, showing you something that I'm, I'm going to be working on, but I just want to reference back to our soon-to-be tutorial for um, the bookcase quilt. A few things that I wanted to clarify. Um, I've been telling you to go do your homework, find some, find some lovely fabric, but what I forgot to omit, and somebody reminded me so kindly, of course, of course, of course, um, it may be very difficult for you to source um, in a small amount of time um, novelty fabrics of, you know, images of teacups or teapots or whatever you want on your shelves. And of course, you can actually make your own. Now, this is where um, an artist's or a more of a stepping outside your box, a more creative streak, which everybody has in us, comes into play. What I mean by that is most of you have a stash of fabric, a small stash, or go to the fabric store and see, oh, I love that fabric. Well, this is a case in point. Say you wanted a beautiful um, china vase on your shelf. You wanted a beautiful blue and white uh, lovely vase. Well, what you can do, literally, get a hunk of blue and white fabric that looks like china. I pulled it from my, my, uh, my blue shelf over here. I just did this to show you. And I literally cut out a vase shape. You can do, th and, and there you go, china vase. It's not, a, it's not a printed image, which I have a lot of, but I, I do this also. I do this with my canning jars, with my, my fruit and my veg and all my, my little bits of my bakery things. I just cut out the image of, of yardage fabric. So there, right there, a lovely little blue and white china vase. Now you're saying, well, that's beautiful, but maybe you could put a little gold, little tiny piece of gold on the top of it. Just make a little gold rim, just a little tiny sliver. Use your imagination. Do you want some flowers in it? Maybe just a little bit of, you know, fussy cut, a, a, a beautiful flower image. Again, I don't want you to overthink this at all. Um, it's... It's um, supposed to be fun, but the other thing is also when you're looking for your images, you want to think what would go on my shelf, and you might think, well, maybe a potted plant, but I can't find anything. So what you would do, maybe you could get a piece of orange or dark or rusty color fabric this much, a couple inches, and cut out, cut out a terracotta pot, and then put in a little bit of green maybe a batik for some ferns, just slivers. So I hope you get the idea of you don't have to, you know, rack your brains to find, you know, to find specific. I have, I have like specific images. Like there's a, there is right here, there's a plate. I've had this piece of fabric forever and it's a proper looking plate. But by all means, if you want a beautiful plate, Maybe you have a beautiful piece of fabric that, you know, you just absolutely love. Um, just cut it into a plate shape. So uh, what I'm saying is let your imagination go wild. Now, the other thing I wanted to address is how I made my uh, bookshelf quilt um, is, is maybe not for beginner beginners because I actually attached my bookshelf quilt, my, my um, things to my shelf with free motion quilting. I, I, I um, built my shelves, which I'm going to show you how to do. I have some lace. I found some lace and some doilies. Um, I'm going to put a hunk of lace on. All you need is a little bit. I don't know how big my shelf's going to be. Um, oh, you're just going to need a couple yards of black fabric. I got Kona cotton, but I need black fabric. And also, I was thinking about it. If you want to make a wall hanging which I guess this is going to be up on a wall, not necessarily a cuddly quilt. Um, you may just want to, like, you know, fussy cut your images and use an iron-on uh, back, an, an iron-on fusible web. And that's it. That's it. You know, like you cut out your vase and you stick a hunk of, you know, you iron on some fusible web. I'm going to address this in, in, um, specifics when I when we go to put everything on but you might want to be thinking that because how I do it is I free motion quilt in the quilting stage I glue everything I'll just do Elmer's glue stick around the edges 
and I stick everything on and then I'll show you how I do it. But then I free motion quilt all of my images. And if you're not good with free motion quilting, which, which a lot of you are like, oh, I don't know how to free motion quilt, that may present a little bit of a challenge for a beginner. So that's that's that. Um, you need a couple yards of, or a yard and a half. Again, I don't know how big I'm going to make it. I pulled my my black from my stash here. Um, however big I'm going to make it, however big you want to make it, you might want to make just a small one. I have the brown wood tone. I of that of my other quilt that you can reference back to i um don't usually make the same quilt twice but since since i was sad to see it go and since there was sort of an overwhelming like you know response to like oh show us how you make that quilt i'm going to make it of course it's not going to look my shelves aren't going to look the same um but my my actual uh my actual bookcase is it's going to have black and maybe a bit big, bigger bit smaller whatever i don't have the same lace Whatever, I don't have the same hankies, of course, and I certainly don't have the same stuff to put on my shelves. But um, I just wanted you to not to stress and to use your imagination. You want to use, you want to use, you want to make books. If you're going to make a bookshelf, go. Or maybe you, maybe you want to get like a um, a smaller plaid, or just anything. Just stagger it. Just start thinking. Or you can put a, again, I'm going to address this when we actually go to make it. But just to get your thinking cap on, to step outside the very safe box. Um, I've been cutting images. Don't, don't look at me, because I've been cutting images for years. And I have a stash here. But again, very, very simple. What goes on, maybe, maybe you have a beautiful yellow. You could, you could um, uh, do a candlestick or, or a set of candlesticks in graduated sizes with a gold fabric. So think think about it a lot and also um if you have uh some of you may or may not again i know a lot of you aren't beginners have an embroidery machine there may be images that you can embroider maybe a camera i don't know something like that whatever and you can stick that you can embroider it and then you stick it on your shelf maybe just even glue it and if it's if it's not to be um washed and it's only on the wall you may just want to just sort of quilt the shelves or something and just and just have it as an image i actually quilted mine although i wouldn't have i wouldn't have slept the, i wouldn't have cuddled with it because it had my hankies it was absolutely a wall hanging and in that respect you have a little bit more freedom on how you want to attach these things so i just wanted to address that um like i say maybe you have a beautiful a beautiful tiny floral cut out um teapot tea, teapots and you can go online and get um, free, they're called vectors, a free image of like an outline of a teapot. And again, I was saying perspective and scale matters, but it doesn't really, you know, it doesn't really. I, I have, you know, I have um, a bottle of olive oil here. There's a tiny little bottle of olive oil, right? And then I have, and then I had cut out a, a, a like a drink, like, you know. This is my drink is much bigger than my bottle of olive oil. Who cares, right? You know, it's, it's, it's just a fantasy, you know, sort of thing. But these are just some hints that I have. Um, again, like, think about what you want on your shelves. If you want plants, if you want candlesticks, if you want picture frames, there are ways you can make a, you can transfer your actual photographs onto, um, uh, through, a, through a jet, I think it's a, through an inkjet printer, or digitally, I don't know how you do it, but like you can go to Joann's or a, a hobby store and get the actual um, photo copying, um, photo uh, transferring p images onto fabric. That's what I mean. And then make a little frame around it. So what I'm saying to you is it's not going to be copying me. I'm going to be doing what I'm going to be doing. And your bookshelf quilt, what's going on your shelves is all yours. And if you, if you just have beautiful fabrics, then that, so be it. If you have, perhaps, I have, um, here, I was thinking about it. I have some world map fabric. I could do a globe. Just cut out a little piece of, just cut out a circle. So you, you understand. Think about what's going to go on your shelves. My shelves are going to be like a, my junk drawer. I, I have all, oh, there was my phone. I have all of these things to do, and I'm going, i got to get my phone. I'm going to, um, mine's sort of just going to be a, a compiling of everything on my shelves. So anyway, just a little handy hint to start you getting ready. I don't know when our tutorials will be. I have a few other videos I'm going to throw up. Um, 
but uh not throw up but it's not throw up there but like put on youtube and um then we'll we'll get going once you start when I, once i you know start getting people saying oh i got my stuff together and then i'll make a tutorial on um how to compile our bookshelf so um it's exciting okay just wanted to give you those little handy hints don't stress about it think outside the box tap into your creative bit your creative soul and have fun with this and then we'll all be back here same place same time whenever all right see you folks bye